What's going on everybody? Today what we've got here is we've got a new Aventon uh, electric bike that uh, a customer bought and put together. Um, there's some things that we need to do. The uh, front wheel is loose and the handlebars are um, not tight on there because we pushed down on it and it was slipping. So there's some things that we're going to need to be doing. But the biggest thing that we need to do is this bike has no brakes whatsoever. So you spin the wheel and it just goes all the way to the handlebar and doesn't stop. So these are the Zoom brakes. And I was trying to do some research on there and there's not a lot of videos out there on these brakes. Everything I can tell, these are mineral uh, fluid brakes. So not DOT, it's mineral uh, oil. So we're going to be using a Shimano uh, uh, brake fluid or Shimano compatible brake fluid. Um, and we're going to be uh, showing kind of a step-by-step -step on how to bleed this. Uh, this has been a little bit of a problem. Uh, I really love the Aventon bikes, but I've, the last couple of them I've had come in, these Zoom brakes have not been doing too good. So we're going to see if we can get this working good for the customer and get him on the road. Now to do the back brakes, what we need to do is we need to cut the zip tie that's holding the cable for the rear motor. We need to unhook the uh, cable for the motor first thing. That's what we need to do. Uh, because when this wheel drops out, we don't want it to tug on the cable because it may damage it. So I've already loosened up this side. I'm loosening up this side. And with the weight of this thing, it's just wanting to come on out. And I'm going to just make sure it clears the derailleur. The kickstand was in the way, so I put it down. Now that the wheel is out of the way, we're able to access this rear brake a lot better. I'm going to clean the brake. I see some uh, potential oil contamination. Eh, it looked worse than it is. It is getting a little dirty, but uh, I think we might be okay. We're going to get a biscuit. So we want to gather all of our parts. Now, in this video, I've got a universal bleed kit, but it doesn't have all of the fittings for this to work. I do have the fitting to work on the brake lever, the reservoir there. However, they are using a much smaller um, screw or plug on the brake. I've looked through all of my uh, brake parts, my kit, and there's nothing. So I ended up getting a, let me see, syringe here with a, a nice long thin tip. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw this directly into the brake. I'm going to make sure that all of the air pockets are out. Let's add a little more brake fluid here. Okay, so we've got all the air bubbles out. Now if you really wanted to uh, get very fancy with it, if you were to, let, let's see if I can get close up here. Okay, so if we plug up this tip here and if we start to suction the thing. If you'll notice, look at all those bubbles. Do you see them popping up? Okay, those were little tiny bubbles in the system. Okay, now that they've all ridden, risen to the top, 
I'm going to slowly let go of the plunger and then I'm going to make sure that all the bubbles get up to that tip there. I'm going to get this rag and I'm going to squeeze the air bubbles out. So work those air bubbles all out because the more air bubbles you can get out, the better. Okay. Now that we've got all the voids out of the fluid, we can go ahead and do the next step. So I've got my biscuit in the brake here. I'm going to unscrew this little Torx screw right here. I'll try to get a closer view. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this little, Al well, it's not an Allen key, it's a Torx screw right here, and that's what we need to get access to so that we can bleed this brake. Now, I don't have the proper fitting for this, so I'm showing you what you can do in a pinch, and it's, and it's pressurized, so it it just shot a little bit of fluid out. Now I'm going to get my syringe here and it does screw nicely inside of there. This will not damage the brake and in a pinch this will work. I'm going to have to find an actual bleed kit for this brake but this is I've had several of these zoom brakes, and this is the first one that I didn't have a fitting for. They seem to change all the time. Now that we've got the syringe in the rear caliper, we're going to move to the brake lever here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unscrew the little bleed port. I've got a rag ready. We're going to unscrew that. And then I'm going to screw in this right here, which is going, going to act as a reservoir for the, uh, all the fluid that I want to be pushing from the back of the uh, bike. So I'm going to uncork that right there. All right, now I'm going to be pushing some of that fluid from the back of this to the front of the bike and while you're doing this you want to turn the handlebar to make sure that any air bubbles work their way out. So as you see whenever I turn here see how much air is now coming out? So I'm going to pull this in and we should see a little bit more air. There was a little bit. Pull the brake lever in, more air in. Just keep working it. I'm going to rotate the handlebar some more. Oh, we're starting to get a bit of too much fluid in here. I don't want it to spill. So at this point I'm going to just pour some of this out and that is some dirty looking fluid even though this bike is brand new. Okay, we're going to push some more fluid through. We're going to move this around. Oh, look at that. We got a lot more air there. I'm going to pull that in, out, in, out. And I believe that we have all of the air out of the system. Okay, so now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to kind of cork this. There's a little clip here that's going to stop any fluid from going out. So now that this is done, I'm going to unscrew this. Watch for fluid. There's none. I'm going to place this screw into the reservoir. Now, before I screw this in, I'm going to push a little bit of fluid through here until I start to see some brake fluid leaking out the top. Okay, we've got some fluid, a little bit of, of a mess. We're going to try to catch all that. Just tighten that just, just lightly. All right, so that's that. Now I'm going to unscrew this. Make sure that you have a towel ready to catch any mess. And if it does leak out, it's not going to get on the brake pad, so that's good. little bit of a leak there. We're going to uh, get this screw put back in. You want to kind of act quickly. We're going to start to screw this in. And before I finish this, I'm going to lightly pull the brake lever as I'm screwing the screw in. And we should see a little bit of fluid leaking out. Okay. And then that's that. All right, so we've got this wheel and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these threads. It really does help with the uh, uh, longevity and the future uh, of the the bike because these threads do strip out if you're not careful because of the design of the axle it's got two flat spots and this nut does not like those flat spots and the grease does help because it just I can thread it on with my finger now whereas before it didn't like doing that This one feels better, but it's still a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the threads. All right, let's get this installed. We're going to put the chain on the last gear because it was on the last gear whenever I took it off. We're going to make sure that we rotate the axle to where the there's a little tab is going to be at the bottom. We're lining up the brake, sliding it in. Get the uh, drive side tightened up first. I'm going to grab the spoke and I'm going to kind of pull the wheel to make sure it's all the way in the dropout. And while I'm doing that, tighten that down. Snug the wheel.
just just snug. You don't need to go full on Hulk with it. Good and snug. Let's uh, hook this back up. We want to make sure that we line up the the arrows. There are two arrows on each one. Line that up. We're going to tighten this collar down. Let's get the zip tie on there. Use my fancy zip tie gun. Sometimes a knife has to work. Be careful not to touch that wire. All right. And then we can test out the brake. And it is working, but I can tell that the brake is a little crooked. So I'm going to get my five millimeter Allen key. I'm going to look at the, wait, that's a Torx. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the brake caliper. And they really didn't make this easy for me. And then I can actually look into the brake and I can actually make sure that the caliper is parallel with the uh, disc. Okay, hit the brake, it's looking good, it's not rubbing, and it works. So we want to make sure that these are tightened to um, between 6 and 8 newton meters. And they're making it very difficult for this back one. Okay. All right. All right, come back here. All right. <clears throat> so the next thing that we're got we've got to do is take it out for a test rod, 
and we got to make sure that the brake pads are not contaminated. Uh, there is some fluid. The brake pads looked like they were okay, but you really can't tell unless you take it out for a test ride. So if uh, we do take it for a test ride and it's contaminated, uh, this is going to be using a Shimano type brake pad and we can just match it up with the, the Shimano pad and we'll be good to go. Now that we're done with the brake bleed, we're, we're wanting to make sure that we clean it thoroughly using a good bike degreaser. What I suggest is the Finish Line Speed Bike Degreaser. Uh, this works really well. It cleans up all the surfaces very well uh, without contaminating the uh, brake pads. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful in any way, please leave me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to tell your friends. Check out some of the other videos on the corner of the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.